Matt, you're very welcome to episode 11 of the Scaling Your Business podcast. Well, thanks. Look forward to it. This is exciting. It's great to have you here. You are number two of the Sandler Wolfpack to come on last episode. We had Neem on or the episode before that. Um, Matt, look, looking through your LinkedIn profile, uh, it looks like straight out of university, you spent six years at Coca-Cola as an account executive, but underneath the title, it says marketing. I'm curious, how did you go from there to owning a sales training company? I know, so, I, I, I know that's a long road. It, it, it's a long road. It's actually kind of funny because when I was in, in university, um, my first job was selling vacuum cleaners door to door. Wow. Uh, so I, I answered an ad, a one ad. They, those were printed in newspapers. Newspapers are pieces of paper that people used to drop off at your doorstep. <laughs> If it, you know, for those of you that are younger, but, and the, the help wanted ad was very simple. It said, good money, limited effort. Nice. And, uh, glad. I called the number and I said, Hey, what, what, what's involved? They said, well, we do open interviews Thursday morning, uh, show up at 9am. So I showed up now I had had, I had ruptured all the ligaments and tendons in, in one of my thumbs and had operations. So I couldn't do manual labor. Like I always had the guy walked into the room. There were 42 people. He held up an empty coffee cup. He said, my name's Jim McVeigh. We sell vacuum cleaners door to door. I'm going to go get a cup of coffee. If anybody's left when I come back, I'm happy to talk to you about a job. So he, he walked out of the room. Uh, 40 people left. I stayed. And a guy named Paul Muma stayed. And we worked that summer. I won a scholarship as the best salesman in three states. Um, it was a great time. I had it. It was fun. Paul uh, stayed because his parents told him he had to get a job. And this was the only job that didn't have fixed hours. Well, wow. so he figured why not? Right. So that's, that's how I got it. Then Coke, they, they talk about it being a sales position, but you have 95% market share. So mm. it really was a marketing position and, and it was account yeah. management. Um, and you know, I, I left Coke, uh, after six years, cause I, I didn't want to move to Chicago or Detroit. And, uh, ended up selling residential real estate because I figured how hard can that be? Everybody lives in a house, right? Yeah, I true. mean, it's gotta be simple. Little did I know the average American realtor makes gross income of $13,000 a year before expenses, mm. Ouch. which is terrible. I mean, that's like a bad month for a normal human. And, um, yeah. and, and so it was a much tougher industry than I realized. I was fortunate. I worked hard. I did well. Uh, ended up in the top 2% in the world um, for Century 21. Um, became a Sandler client because my son was born after you know three years in the business. And I realized that if I continued to work nights, weekends, and 80 hours a week, my son would, would have a dad, just wouldn't know his name. Um, so I became a Sandler client, kept my income identical, and worked half as much, which really is how I ended up Impressive. being becoming part of the Sandler network, becoming a coach and a mm. trainer. And that's, that's how we got here. Well, you, you mentioned your son and you said that that was one of the reasons that pushed you towards Sandler or first being exposed to them. And um, I believe your son is a rugby player. And one of the questions I had down here was that I see from, we're connected on Facebook. I see that you're a rugby fan. Um, and yep. I didn't want to bring this question up considering the result of the game at the weekend, the, the Ireland game. But uh, what got you into that? Uh, so uh, my son, I, I played college football. My son is a football player. Um, my son's high school football coach, his position coach, his linebacker coach, uh, happens to have been a rugby player in college who started three different high school programs in the state of Indiana and is a Hall of Fame uh, rugby player for the state of Indiana. Right. Um, and he told my son, hey, listen, uh, it, it's great. You're, you're going to be a good linebacker. You'll have a nice career. By the way, in the spring, you'll be playing rugby with us. And, and so he, you know, my son is a freshman in high school, knowing nothing at all about rugby, showed up to some indoor touch rugby and uh, fell in love. And, and it, it was just game on from there. I saw that you've been to Ireland before. I guess so because of the Guinness Storehouse picture that I noticed. Yep. Have you and your son been to a rugby game on this side of the Atlantic Ocean? And if yes, so, what we, game was it? So it was Leinster against uh, the Wasps in 2017 in the playoffs. We actually did a high school tour 
Wow. Uh, we stayed in Dublin for four days. We stayed in Galway for four days. Uh, they played, so they played three games. Um, they played a, a, a team from, uh, oh man, I can't even remember, but they, they went two and one. Uh, and, and, and it was a great, it was a great trip. Um, we had a lot of fun. It was a nine day trip with his high school rugby team uh, throughout Ireland. Nice, nice. Yeah. Something else I noticed on your LinkedIn profile, you speak German. There has to be a story behind that. Uh, you know what? It's it, random chance. Uh, I, it, in high school, we had to take a uh, foreign language class. I, okay. I signed up for German because I didn't want to take French and uh, Spanish held no, no appeal to me. Um, <laughs> so I, I took German. Uh, I ended up going to Germany in high school. Uh, I've been back to Germany four or five times since then to stay in Munich and, and just hang out and, and drink beer. I'm, one of my best friends from college lives in London. So we, we would go to Germany for a week and then London for a week and stay with his family. And then, um, you know, those are you, in, in England, you can almost get by speaking American. So you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Germany is a little bit more, more of a challenge. Well, I, I, I love Munich myself as well. Uh, a bit of a dangerous city for me because uh, I'm a big fan of beer and you can get lost in beer gardens quite easily. Yes. Um, but, I, but I do love uh, going over. I tend to space it out of a year between each trip so that I don't put on too much weight. Initial reason you came on this podcast was the Wolf Pack. Um, yeah. That's something that yourself, Nima Samani, Robin Green and Sean Coyle, those that are aren't and son, I won't be familiar with them, just know that they're all rock stars. They started this. What was the reason you started it? So, you know, we, we came back from the Sandler Summit. There were 2,000 people in Florida last March, March 2020. Yeah. And uh, a week later, we get a phone call. Hey, the country's shutting down. We got COVID, right? We're going to two weeks to s- slow the spread. And there was a lot of anxiety and panic. And, and you know, in, in Sandler, we talked to each other a lot. And, and I've, got a, I've known Sean Coyle since 2003 and you know, Robin and I had just worked through uh, Donald Miller's uh, storybook on uh, marketing, uh, mm. brand story marketing. And um, Neiman and I had talked for a while. And I said, hey, if we're going to be shut down and everybody's going to be sitting at home, we ought to just do training every morning for an hour and just keep everybody's eye on the ball. I mean, yeah. it's two weeks, right? I mean, how hard could it be? Well, Little did you know? <laughs> You know, now we're in week 51 of the two week shutdown, but we started, we started doing the, the uh, webinars and very quickly, we got a pretty good audience of people that showed up. Um, Six and a half thousand. Yeah. By the end, we had 6,500 separate people show up to, uh, to, to, to webinars that we did. Um, And it, and it was great because it helped them stay on task. And it helped us stay on task and, and keep our minds off all the, the bad things that are happening and, and just focus yeah. on what we control. How important do you think it is that someone has uh, or someone finds their wolf pack? I, I think there is nothing more important than the people you surround yourself with. Um, you will do exactly what they expect. You know, we, we always, uh, when we teach bonding and rapport, one of the things that I always say is Pittsburgh Steelers fans like Pittsburgh Steelers fans and Cleveland Browns fans like Cleveland Browns fans and, and people who are fans of the Baltimore Ravens, they like work release people because <sighs> the, you, you are most like the people who are most like you. Yeah. And, and if you surround yourself by people who, you know, are, are successful and driven and goal oriented and, and, and constantly learning, you'll be successful and driven and goal oriented and constantly learning. Well, to me, one of the pros of finding your wolf pack is to uh, sharpen your tools. And Absolutely. I guess that's what yourself and the other three guys do. You, you brought it back last week. I joined for the first one of, I don't know how long you're going to do it for you, but you did bring it back. Yeah. So we, uh, we've done two kind of reunions. Uh, we did a 60 day reunion after it. And then we did a, a one year reunion um, and each one of those, we've had 150-ish people show up. Um, it, it's, been, it's been good. Um, you know, we, we really focus on the fundamentals. Um, you know, inside Sandler, everybody's got their little specialty and everybody, you know, wants to write a book and, you know, how to sell on LinkedIn the Sandler way or how to sell professional services the Sandler way. I, 
I think if I were to write a book, my book would be Simplicity, The Sandler Way. Keeping things and, simple. And, and that's really what we focus on is what are the simple things that we ought to do in order to grow business, manage our lives, manage our careers, help our companies, help our clients, but they're simple. Well, Nima said to me that one of the eye-opening things for him having become part of the Wolfpack and doing that on a weekly basis in the initial phases of it was it forced him, as well as the lockdown, forced him to start creating content. Uh, he initially had mixed feelings about that. I know some people still have mixed feelings about creating, creating content. It can easily take up a lot of time. That's that's no pay time. I'm a believer that if you know if you get your cookbook done, I block out hours in the morning to make sure I get prospecting done. No harm in then creating content, put content up because that does lead over time to more awareness, whether it's you send out envelopes and people recognize a logo from the stuff that you've put up online to radio ads, anything. Um, what was, what's your strategy for content creation? Cause I noticed that you cre- put up the Matt Nettled in one minute, 60 second videos. Yeah. So we do the sales meeting minute, of course, being in, in sales, the, the typical video is about two minutes. So it really should be the sales meeting minutes, but you know, that doesn't sound as cool. No. Um, and, and my belief is that you have to create content. In, in fact, I would say if you're not creating content that re- uniquely uh, reflects your style, you probably don't understand what your style is very well. Um, you know, if, if, if you look around the, the Sandler world, there are, you know, 400 Sandler offices around the world. Yeah. Um, and in those 400 offices, you probably have 600 different versions of every story. Um, Absolutely. I, I, I think it's important that people that contact you, your marketing should create the ability for them to say, hey, this guy has the flavor or taste of what I'm looking for. And, and, and he has the way he thinks about things makes sense to me. And, and that's really what I think the, the role of content is. So. What type of content do you put out? You you put out the 60 second videos. You you post weekly, daily on LinkedIn. You got emails, newsletters going out. You give free talks to the public. Give me an idea of what your content strategy mix is. So my belief is that in order to be effective on social media, you have to post about four times a day. Okay. Right? You, you got to be a, a steady drip. Um, I also believe that you should be contacting your prospects once a week by email. Um, yeah. I, I, I think you ought to be making phone calls. I, I think you ought to be sending direct mail in envelopes with letters and stamps, the old fashioned stuff. Mm. Um, and, and so I, I think you should have a cadence, uh, a multiple channels. I've got one here that I'm sending afterwards. Go. Yep. Mul- multiple channels, multiple steps. And, and you know that, and I think we all know that it, it takes more to, to reach the right person now. You know, the yeah. average person prospect takes 16 touches before you reach them right now. And, and so my, my goal is to put out a coherent message that creates a meaningful conversation with my typical or ideal prospect. Well, right? there are a lot of people there. There are a lot of people that look at my stuff and say, I don't like it. That's yeah. okay. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Tea is not everybody's cup of tea. That's true. Right. So I'm okay with that. I'm not trying to be I'm not right for everybody. I just want well, the people to identify who I'm right for. For sure. And I love that. You know, I think Nima uh, held his hands up and admitted to that mistake in the early days, pretending to be John Rosso at a talk before. And he said that he'd been working for IBM for 30 years or something. The dude doesn't even look like he's worked 30 years. <laughs> yeah. um, being part of the, net, the, the Sandler Network myself, uh, you're fortunate enough, and we're fortunate enough to get weekly sessions from other top trainers. I was on a call this Monday with Hamish Knox from Canada. One of the nuggets he shared was he has this strategy that he won't let 30 days go by without touching a prospect that's in his like CRM or someone that he wants to go after. Um, And Carlos Garrido, another standard trainer said that uh, using that example of not letting 30 days go by, by just saying, Hey, Red day thought of you, blah, 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 blah. He manages to pick up two to three new bi- pieces of business every single month. Over a year, 12 pieces of business, each piece of business could be worth 10 grand. That's, that's six figures in just doing that. What 
is one of the things that you implemented over the last 12 months, a thing like that, that has, that you've seen magic results from. So the, the biggest magic results that I've seen is talking to my clients about people they know, people they love, people they care about, and who they would want to have the same experience that they're having, mm. right? It's, it's, it's so old fashioned, but, but calling somebody up and saying, Hey, how is this working for you? And who do you know that would want the same thing? It, it, it's amazing what your clients will do for you. If you take care of them, you know, yeah. Zig Ziglar said, you can get anything you want. If you help other people get what they want first. And, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about Sandler is you can get anything you want. If you help other people get what they want first. Agreed. Agreed. I think it was you that I saw put up this the other day. You uh, correct me if I'm wrong, put up a post that said the cost of a bad hire is like a quarter of a million dollars. Yes. Big statement. Talk me through it. So actually the Inc. Magazine, it, it's a specific study that was done that was published in Inc. Magazine. Um, what they looked at is when you, when you make a bad hire, you're typically with that person for a year. Mm -hmm. So you've got the first year salary and benefits and, but you also lose the opportunity costs of all the things they mess up that you have to go back and fix. Yes. Then you have the amount of time you spent interviewing for that position. Then you have the amount of time that you spend with other people training the person when they're first hired. Then you have the amount of time that it takes to manage them out of the position, make them available to industry again. And then you have the amount of time it takes to find the next candidate, sort through the next candidates, interview, hire, and train. And so you have all this wasted time that in theory is avoidable if you had clearly identified the job that you wanted to hire for, clearly identified the characteristics of an ideal candidate, set up an interview process to deal with the subjective and objective criteria, and then onboarded effectively. So one of the things, and I want to dive a little deeper into this with you, one of the things that people use in Sandler to help if they offer the service of hiring for their clients is Disc and Divine. And on your profile, it says that you're certified from or maybe 12, 14 months ago in Disc. How important do you think it is, brief overview of uh, understanding someone's personality style and then having a mixture of that or just the one profile in the office? As in when I say a mixture, should you have a mixture or should you just have all D's or all I's or you get the picture? So, so clearly as a firstborn high D, my belief is the, the best and brightest of us all are firstborn high D's. <laughs> but the reality is there are like 12 of us in Indiana. And so if mm. my goal was to only sell to people just like me, I, I would go out of business quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I will tell you in, in any business, you need a mixture of the strengths of each of the discs, right? It's great to have high Ds as long as you want rapid action without any forethought, without any consequences, you know, considered. And it's great to have high Is if you just want a lot of fun. And it's great to have high Ss if you want somebody that's going to run a process. And it's great to have high Cs if you want somebody sitting around and doing nothing but thinking about the third third and fourth order consequences of doing something possibly. Yeah. But the reality is you can't be one of those profiles and succeed. And your company can't have just those profiles, just one of those profiles and succeed. You need the strengths and you actually need the weaknesses that each of those profiles brings. So here's my belief. My belief is every profile has a seed of greatness in it if you Agreed. understand the profile and use its strengths and hide its weaknesses. Well, here's a perfect example that landed in my inbox this morning. I'm a high I with S as my secondary. So I'm not, I, I, my, my D is really low on the scale. I uh, have this podcast. My father has his podcast and somebody we've been trying to get this person on and they said they wanted to come on. And when they're emailed back and forth, it was, can you send me through the questions? Can you give me an idea how long it's going to be? Can you let me listen to it afterwards before you go live? And I was just like, this is so fucking hard to get this person on. And we stopped. We, we just stopped replying. Whereas 
to get you on. It was, hey, Matt, pick a time here and I'll, and I'll talk to you on the day. And that's it. Uh, yeah. I was in the moment. I was like, "These are so much easier to deal with when you want something." It's just like, do you, "Are you in or are you out?" Yeah, I'm in. Cool. <laughs> my my favorite sales call was a high D client who um, evaluated his sales team. We got you know six divine profiles back and six disc profiles back. He looked at me when I handed him the stack of papers. You know, it's three inches high, and he said what is all this going to tell me? I said, well, it's going to tell you, you should train your people. We should start next week. He goes, great. Here's my credit card. How much? And that was the whole sales call. It was less than two minutes. It was beautiful. Wow. I love it. I love it. So we've got a bunch of rules in Sandler. I have a, a, a graphic there because I've been familiar with the 49 rules, but the graphic, I can count more than 49. There's probably about a hundred rules on this. It says behavior, attitude, technique, Sandler rules and insights. What's your favorite rule? So my favorite rule is you live a straight life in an unstraight world, you're going to get killed. Okay. I'm not familiar with that as a Sandler rule. So explain that, that to me. That's a Sandler rule. So that's a, a okay. David Sandler. Um, and, and what he talked about is, you know, sales is a game. It's hysterical activity on the way to the grave. And, and you ought to have fun. And you ought to realize that not only is it a game for you, but it's a game for your buyers. And your buyers aren't being straight with you. You know, when buyers say things like, hey, I'm going to need three quotes to make a decision. You know, a, a serious salesperson who believes that's a, a serious statement says, well, let me get you my paperwork. You know, somebody mm -hmm. says to me, hey, Matt, I'm going to need three quotes to make a decision. My immediate response is, oh, best film of the summer. They're like, well, what's that? I said, well, that, that's my favorite quote. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. But it's, it is. It, it, it's a ridiculous request from them as well. You know, wow. and if somebody says, why did you call? And, you know, and I say, well, it's a sales call. And they go, well, I, I don't buy things over the phone. I said, well, then I won't tell you it's a sales call. I mean, what, <sighs> what, you know, you, you say ridiculous things to me. I say ridiculous things to you. And, and at some point we can have a normal conversation, a simple, normal conversation. But you also have the right as a salesperson as much as they do. Like, yeah. as a, like example, this morning, got an email from someone who said, hey, can you get, send me a quotation out of the blue uh, for 45 hours, uh, eight people, something to do with sales management. How am I supposed to send the quotation based off that? Like, you'd probably have to fire me if I was just to send one out of the blue. <laughs> I, I mean, that's a, it's a ridiculous request with, with no context. And, you know, then they're going to come back and say, well, your quote's too high. Well, what do you mean my quote? <laughs> like, well, like, yeah, I actually, funny enough, I went in next door to the office next door and I said, here's my thought pattern to my father. What do you think? And he just said, they're fishing around for quotes. That's all they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. And, and if you play the game and believe that they're being straight with you, you're going to get killed. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Sandler Conference this year is virtual. It's rather than a two or three day thing. I was hoping to get out. I had actually bought the ticket to come out in March, but now it's a virtual day. Doesn't look like in training is going to be back for a while. So what's the future of 2021 look like for Matt Nettleton and his team in terms of delivering training for their clients? So we've been a hundred percent virtual um, since March 18th of last year. Mm. Uh, at, and it's funny because attendance is up about 25% to training. Um, yep. it's, it's been really interesting. Um, in, so Indiana is doing pretty well. We're, we're probably in the top five or 10 states in, as far as limited spread, limited infection nice. rates. Um, we're back to about 50% capacity in restaurants. My goal is to reopen my training center, get people back in live training, um, as soon as we're at a hundred percent, but what I know is whether I'm live or virtual, people are buying and selling all day long. There's more opportunity within two miles of my office than I could service in the next 10 years. Yeah. And, and so the reality is what's in the future. Well, I don't know. The future is going to be different than the present, but there's more opportunity available to me and more opportunity available to my clients than we could ever sell and service. So well, we'll figure it out. I actually think the opportunity is greater now. 
Um, and, 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 and part of me is hoping that it's extended for, for a while longer. And I'll explain why. Uh, bought into the San Ireland franchise late 2020. My father's on the... He was the first franchise outside of North America 19 years ago. And uh, growing up, I would have, you know, seen him come in from work, go out of work. And quite often, a lot, he was on a, he was on a, on a plane or he was doing a full day in Salesforce in Dublin. And then he'd come home and he's tired. But he, now we have the ability to walk 15 minutes to the studio. This is an apartment we've converted into an upstairs, downstairs studio. And we can deliver a session in the morning on management, go home for lunch, come back, do another session with someone else and do a third session. And then we've touched three companies in the one day. If you have public programs, you can do multiple. So you can actually fit more in, still charge the same price, but you're doing three extra times of work. So your revenue is three extra times of revenue. Yeah. I, the only thing that I would, the only thing that I would uh, say to you is rather than deliver, you know, three programs charge the same price. The beautiful part of it is you deliver three programs and you deliver three times the value mm. for which people happen to be willing to pay the same price. Yeah. I mean, that's, it, it, it's beautiful because people are getting better. Um, I, I've had multiple clients who have grown their business 35, 40, 50, 60% over the last year, simply by getting good at asking questions, um, being a little bit curious, being a little bit disciplined, actually running the sales process that they've laid out and, and doing the fundamentals of their business and, and doing it despite the fact that, oh my God, COVID type one air, we're all going to die. I mean, they're, they're just doing the, the good fundamental work and, it, and it's, it's amazing. Matt, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. I'll leave links to your LinkedIn and the uh, YouTube channel, your videos on it as well. Um, and thanks for having, being my guest. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. I enjoyed this.